Hey, Coach Frankenberger. So, first things first, uh, year number two for Team Missouri coming back to the National Middle School Duels, right? That is correct, yeah. Year one for you guys, what would you say it was like coming to a National Duels event, 30-plus teams in Toledo, Ohio? It, 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 was, it was exactly what we were looking for. We'd done a lot of the uh, regional duels, a lot of the stuff where we're getting other teams from other states, and a lot of age-based stuff, but to go in there where it's just a free for all. It's eighth grade and under, it's top kids from around the country. And that's what we went there to see. So you know, the team we put together, all the kids came in there and, you know, the goal was to match up against the top kids in the country and see how you stack up. And, and it wasn't disappointing. It was exactly what we were looking for. I talked to Sheen Chittum last night. He's from Tennessee. His son's one of the top uh, guys in the country, uh, Cody Chittum from Blair Academy. And, um, you know, he talked about his kid took some really tough losses, you know, um, his kid won the who's number one thing recently at the Flow Wrestling down in Austin, Texas. You know, Cody Chittum's a hammer. He came to this tournament and lost two matches on cautions. What do you think the big things, you know, you're a dad, you're a wrestling dad, your son wrestled in the event last year. What do you think the big takeaways for, for you as a dad and you as a coach were for your son at this event? It's the, it's the opportunity for him to see the top kids around there. And um, it seemed like everybody out there, you know, everybody wanted to win, but everybody was focusing on developing wrestlers and, and um, not making excuses. So, you know, and oftentimes in the events, there's people arguing about calls and, you know, getting upset because they think the kid was being too physical or whatever. And, you know, we heard over and over again where coaches just told the kids to figure it out. You know, if the kid looked up and was upset, they were told to, you know, do something about it then because it's your match, you're wrestling it. And um, you know, I think the biggest part for, for my own kid was how do you handle, you know, going out against the top kids in the country and realizing that sometimes a loss is not that big of a deal because you actually competed. You, you stood out there and you, you went the distance and you saw how you stack up. And then on top of that, how do you get yourself back on track and come back to the next match and put it all behind you? Cause you know, unlike a lot of the events, there, there was no easy matches and you know, it's not such thing as, you know, getting the easy kid or, you know, these next two matches will be an easy one. Every kid they wrestled was a top level kid. And you know, that's, that, that's something that they're not used to seeing at, at uh, more of the regional and local events. So, you know, as a dad, do you feel like it was worth, it was worth the travel, you know, halfway across the country for you guys from, from uh, St. Louis to, uh, you know, Toledo, Ohio? It was probably worth it then, right? Absolutely. Um, yes, they, they, they got to see how they stack up. And they, um, you know, they, they did exactly what they expected to do. They went out there and wrestled the top kids. They won some matches against some really, really elite level kids. And they, they lost some close ones, and then they came across some kids that were just at a whole other level, and that helped them see that gap and the difference between where they are and where the next level is. So it's going to be a – it's a COVID year. It's 2020 is, is the year of the COVID, right? So, so we've got all these crazy restrictions, and you were just telling me you've got some different school restrictions where your kids go have different restrictions. Everything's different. Every state's different. Every city's different. Um, unfortunately, the event, you know, National Middle School Duels had to move down the road to, oh, yeah, down the road to Perrysburg, just south on I-75. Before you guys had it made, you were on Easy Street. Your hotel was hooked right next to the venue. You didn't even have to walk outside. It was amazing, right? Well, you guys just don't, you're not getting that this year, right, Coach Frankenberger? So now you're in the soccer dome, right? And Dom D'Amelio and that, that whole staff, the Genoa staff, National Middle School Duels, you know, National Middle School Duel staff, Jody uh, Burnett, they, they really worked really hard to get this thing at a venue. They got it. Now your guys' travel's the same. Hotels are probably the same. Are you excited for maybe a little bit of a different change in venue? You know, it's once you get out there and you're on the mat, it really doesn't matter. I mean, even the parents in this, in this, on the sidelines that are watching, you know, you're down there coaching them, you're there with the kids. It's not going to I mean there might be a little bit of, you know, rules and regulations, but we're still going to be down there with a group of kids. We're going to be out on a mat and they're going to be competing. And, you know, these kids that competed from little bitty gyms and small towns to, you know, some of the biggest venues in the country. So, you know, they, they'll adapt and they'll just go out there. And honestly, I'm not sure it's going to be that much different. It's just going to be wrestling, except we got masks on. You know, the biggest thing that you want to, your kid to get out of is to figure stuff out, right? What do you want the Missouri kids and the team to really get out of National Middle School doors? You got a cool story about how you guys got in, right? You got in. It's really competitive to get in this. There's a wait list. You guys got in last year for your first time, and you had some success. You won the bronze pool, right? What do I you think want kids? I think. What's that? 
I think that's where we finished up. Well, that's pretty good. Yeah, so we we were right right around in that in you're middle, right, middle, right you're middle, middle you're middle of the pack in a in a national event. It's pretty good for your first year. Would for you sure. agree? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, what do you want the Missouri kids to get out of this year? Kid to get out of it, like besides the figure it out moments. What else do you want them to see with with this this high level competition? The that each year you can make those strides, you can make those gains that you know that, and I think they the more exposure they have to the the higher level of competition it doesn't become something that that seems that far out there they, they realize that they're part of that they're at that level they can compete at that level and you know to go out there and compete as a team you don't have to you know you respect your opponent you respect the other teams but but the, there's no such thing as a team that you go out there and like oh gosh we don't want to wrestle these guys you guys are too good that that's why you're there is to to see how you stack up and each year we expect to improve and you know the goal would be to be a gold a gold bracket team um you know that but it's all going to play itself out on the mat and we'll you know that's our goal and we'll we'll take each match and each each duel as a time million dollar question i have for everybody i talk to will are you, you're in missouri right you are correct will missouri have high school wrestling this year will they have a state tournament will uh, yes will they have yes wrestling? will they have high yes school? Yes, we're, we're, we're here in St. Louis County, which is the most restrictive county, I think, in the whole state. And our kids are practicing and they will be competing. There will be restrictions. There will be, you know, less fans, just like we're seeing up in Ohio. But, um, yeah, there, there's a whole full schedule. They're planning on competing. My, my older two sons just actually left for their high school practice. So, um, as of now, there is, they, they are ready to go and I don't see anything that's going to stand in the way as far as the actual wrestling. The, the way it plays out might be a little bit different, but there'll be matches. There'll be wrestling. Biggest thing you want your kids, you know, you got multiple kids. How many boys do you have that wrestle? Three. Any girls? No. So three boys that wrestle. What do you Correct. think the biggest lesson, whether it's at this national level event, national middle school duels, or the Afton Quadrangular – that's a, yeah. Missouri, that's a real Missouri thing that Greg Warren talks about. I, I believe it's yeah. an actual real thing, is it not? Yeah, there's a, there, there, there's a town. It's in, it's in uh, the southern part of St. Louis County. It's, it's a, city, a town of Afton, yeah. Is that a, it's Correct. a real thing. Yep, there, it's Afton, yep, Afton. <laughs> I love it because that's like a part of his, is that his, yeah. his right? Yeah, he, yep. So, yeah, he went, to, he went to, I think he went to Kirkwood High School, which is right there. And, you know, so they, they're right there not too far from each other. So he's, he's shooting straight with you. Did you know he beat Sean Bormet, the head coach at Michigan, in the round of 12 to be an All-American? I knew he had a lot of success. I knew that he wasn't just a comedian that uh, talked about it, that he was actually the real deal. Greg Warren beat Sean Bormet in the round of 12 to be an All-American. I think it was his senior year and maybe Burnett's, Bormet's freshman year, true freshman year or something. But that's amazing, right? But uh, 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 the back to the Afton quadrangular, right? I mean, it's not like – it's a joke because it's like – it's not super tough, right? Right, for sure. Local St. Louis County teams, right? Mm -hmm. And you guys go over here, and it's it is coast to coast, north coast, south coast, right? You got Texas teams, you got California teams, you got Jersey teams, you've got PA teams. David Taylor brings a team. What do you want your kids to get out of it? Whether it's the Afton Quadrangle or the National Middle School duels. What's Coach Kevin Frankenberger want his three sons to get out of wrestling? Kids he coaches, what do you want them ultimately to take away from the sport of wrestling? The, the self-discipline, the self-confidence, the way they carry themselves, the way that they have to figure it out. I mean, you, the kids around our club and around our, our sport around here, they hear it all the time about how they, they need to figure it out. Nobody's going to fight the battle for you. And, and we see that play out through all areas of their lives where they just, they solve their own problems. They're problem solvers. They don't, they don't need to, you know, come asking for help all the time. They're, they're just going to grit it out and tough it out and, you know, win or lose the respect comes from you going out there and handling yourself the right way and competing the right way and giving a hundred percent. And then more importantly, how you handle yourself afterwards. I mean, we're all, we're, it's, it's easy to be a, be a good winner, but it's not always easy to be a good loser and then also be a good teammate after you've taken one of those losses. Yeah, that's I think, so. I think critical thinking and problem solving are two pretty good things you can have in life, right? Uh, that's that's just beautiful. And when you watch it, you watch it develop and you watch the confidence develop with those kids as they go through it. And, and they realize, you know, you're part of the team. But, you know, everybody, you know, very seldom do you see a, 
you know, a, a, a 70 to nothing score in a duel because every, every time they're going to have somebody that's going to probably take a loss. And, you know, sometimes it's going to be your turn and sometimes it's not. And you compete and you win and you lose as a team. So I can keep an eye out for your three boys, whether it's in results or whatever. Um, what's oh, I only got one going up there. My other two are in high school. No, 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 no. I'm saying, like, through the season, like, I can look at high school results. And my buddy Joe Williamson is over there. He does grow wrestling out of Kansas City. So he yeah. might get an event you guys are at or run an event that you guys are at. What are your boys' names and what are the schools? And so I have Gabe Frankenberger. He's a, he's a senior at Lafayette High School. Um, and okay. then my – What's I have Gabe? a fresh. What's that? What weight's Gabe? Uh, 138, 145. And then uh, I, I got a freshman coming in, and he's, uh, he's closer to 160, 170. So he, he will be at the freshman JV level. And then my younger son, Caleb, he's a sixth grader, and he walks around about 75, well, probably closer to 80 pounds now. Is it all uh, Lafayette High School? That's coming here. Oh no, we're we're uh, we actually have no, a, we have no, a good... your boys, your boys. Are your boys all yeah. just off the at high school? Your two. Yeah. Two yep. Three? yep. Awesome. I'm gonna have to check them out this year. I love like meeting people and then watching their kids wrestle and like you know hearing the the values that people take from it and not all about winning and losing. That's the biggest thing. And I love the the problem solving end of it, uh, Coach Frankenberger. Man, I, that's that's awesome. That's the good stuff. I love to hear. Um, Anything else you got about National Middle School Duels or anything you want to add? I mean, it's just it's, – it's, it was a great experience last year. It was well run. Um, you know, meeting the other coaches, that, that's been a, 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 great, a great thing that we got out of it was watching how the other coaches handle themselves, how the other coaches coach. Uh, you know, you see David Taylor out there coaching his team. And, you know, when you see the – for the most part, the successful high-level teams, you know, the, the coaches are very, very calm, you know, no, not intense they're just they're let they've, they've they've done the coaching they've worked with the kids and now it's time to go out and perform and and um you know it's a it's a different aspect when when you see it at that level because there, there's not the the same focus just on winning it's more about the competing and the winning takes care of itself so we learned a lot by watching other coaches that's awesome i learned a lot from watching them david taylor yeah that still is like i'm in awe of that because he's training he's training so hard himself yet he takes the time to bring a team, coach the kids, and he, it's a three-day weekend for him. It's not like the dude just shows up for match morning and flies back to state college or something. Like he, he's there, and he's engaged with the kids, and he's genuinely trying to help them, and I was really impressed with that. He, he, he took the time to take pictures with every single one of the kids that I saw go over and ask. You know, sometimes he'd say, hey, come by after our duel or, you know, wait till I get my kids warmed up. But he, he, was, he was very, very – accommodating to those kids the only thing that's going to beat david taylor is not uh you know uh yazdani charati from iran it's not going to be whoever russia puts on the mat at, at, at uh, 86 kilos only the way he can lose uh in tokyo in my opinion and this I, maybe i'm like nuts but he, he the, the injury is the only thing that can beat him he because he is literally could you could put him in the pound for pound conversation and i have i'm comfortable with that he's really good like he is amazing and he crushes everybody he crushes yazdani of iran when they wrestle the olympic gold medal like it's not yeah. close he kicks the tar out of the guy and he beats what? these little scramble positions these hip to hip positions and it's just incredible to watch and then to like see the guy how he works with kids is like he's got right. a he's really good future uh beyond his uh competition years yeah, you, you, you would never know the way he carries himself that he's at that level and that that's who that is. If you didn't recognize him, you just think he's just another, you know, amazing guy who's spending time with kids. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's really impressive. Well, I'm glad you see the same things I see about him when he's at these events. That's awesome. So, Coach Frangenberger, I got a couple more people to talk to today. I appreciate your time, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut you loose. Um, right. I will see you next weekend, all right? Sounds good, man. Look me up. Come find me. All right, thanks for the time. We'll talk next weekend, all right? Uh, you bet, man. We'll thanks, see you. Coach.